have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done here. Anybody in here have any bad habits? Ooh, I love a truthful spirit. My husband's over here going like. <laughs> I can see him peripherally today, right? So as I look at this group and this group and this group over here, I want to tell you we all struggle with bad habits, and we need to be that honest with one another this morning. One of my favorite things to do is confess because I, I always tell you that I, I find myself relieved and healed as I confess some things that I've struggled with. And one of my bad habits uh, that I have struggled with at times is when somebody asks me a question or they want, uh, a, you know, some wisdom on a topic and they come and they say, Pastor Mary, what do you think about this or that? And But before I can even really finish the whole thing, they cut me off and they're good to go and see ya. And I think everything, here's the bad habit, everything in me goes like, <laughs> are you kidding me? And then I go like, Jesus, I'm so sorry because the truth is that you may have gotten to them what they needed in that moment and I need to be good with it and thank you for helping me practice some patience here, right? Nobody thinks that way, do we? A habit. Habit. It's kind of like that thing you go to. It's your automatic, right? You just, it's your, 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 uh, the first thing that you kind of uh, use as a, a lot of times a defense mechanism or a, a standby we all have good habits and we have bad habits. And uh, Jesus knew that about his kids, right? We all have uh, ways to uh, handle things. Um, some of us do some very uh, constructive things to handle stress in life. Some of us do some destructive things. They're bad habits. Um, they don't really bring any fruit into our lives. And God says, I'm going to be working on getting the truth habit to you. I'm working through the power of the Spirit. Aren't you grateful for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Somebody say amen. amen. Our, hand, our good habits can further our growth and spiritual maturity, and we begin to apply the love of God uh, over our lives because that's when we become more like Jesus, and our goal must always be before us that we are becoming more like Jesus each day. It is a daily journey to... Uh, emulate the habits of truth. Jesus is truth. He's a person, and we need to emulate and have those habits that are our first go-tos. Amen? Somebody say amen, because it is a possibility for us, because we got all kinds. Anybody have to deal with mental chatter? Mental chatter. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mental chatter. There's this mental chatter that goes on all the time. And, you know, that mental chatter, uh, you know, kind of starts working. And then pretty soon we find ourselves going back to bad habits rather than forward to good ones. And, and that chatter has to be silenced. And the only way to silence negative chatter is with the truth. Because the truth will set us free. Amen? The truth is what sets us free. We need to practice 
the truth habit. We need to get that into our minds and, and it permeates and, and, and then we're not double-minded people. You know, like when we start living by our natural habits, but then we, we call on, on the name of the Lord and we want all kinds of blessing and miracle and, and there's a conflict in there, isn't there? Do you feel it sometimes? Some, some conflict. I want to serve the Lord, but I got this bad habit, and this is going on, and that's when I got this chatter. God, who's going to help me? And, then it, and, and, and the answer is always going to be Jesus. Amen? It's always going to be about Jesus bringing deliverance and, and, and understanding. When we have wisdom and understanding about God's love for us, we're not going to make love this petty, superficial thing, like as if we were in the center of the universe and that everything that we say is love that spins around like this is true. The bottom line is that God tells us in his word that he loved us. He loved us so much that he gave his son as a sin offering because he knew our habits and our inclinations were sinful. We fell from that perfect place that God created us to be in. And God knows that it's only grace that's going to lift us back. Pardon me, it's only grace that's going to lift us back up out of that pit, amen? And God has a plan for that. And we have this, this uh, a collision. I always call it a collision in my heart. And I, you can call it whatever you want, but it's a collision in my heart where I have these uh, conditioned reactions and responses to life because, you know, I'm 61. And so as I come forward, I've got a lot of stuff that I've lived and I just kind of like bring it along. And all of a sudden, Jesus says like, that's time to let that go. And all of a sudden, you got a, an impasse there and a collision and you got to say, thank you, God, that somebody uh, loves me has my well-being in mind. God's love is about having the well-being of others at mind as well as ourselves. Amen? It is not a cheap thing. We are not in the center of the universe. God is. God created us to pour his love into us. But here's a greater truth about God's love. He wants us to be filled with his presence and his love so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. And until we stop our own struggles, somebody get this today, until we can let go of some of our own stuff that needs to go, the bad habits that we have allowed to occupy our hearts and our thoughts, our ways. Come on, somebody get it. If we're going to let go of some of that stuff, then we're going to find ourselves filled with a whole lot more of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He is a good and loving Father. He wants for us to be filled with his, his love all the time. He, he never wants us to be straying away from things. Come on. He's not sitting back going like, well, I hope they'll make some good habits um, and they'll let go of some of their bad ones. I hope, I hope, I hope they'll do that and then leave it all up to us. His love comes along and says, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming in, in, in a variety of ways to you. I'm coming to let you know that you matter to me. You matter so much to me that I'm going to speak truth into your heart and I'm going to give you the power to rise and to embrace that new way of thinking, that new habit, the righteousness of God. Amen? The, the habit of truth. I want you to embrace the habit of truth. That's God's word to our hearts all the time. There was a little girl, and she was sitting at the dinner table. And in fact, this family's practice and habit was to have a prayer time before they ate. But every day that the family came to the table, the father began the whole process by complaining about everything that was on the table. Complain, 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 complain. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? One day the little girl said, Daddy, you know, do you believe that God hears our prayers? And the father said, yes, of course I believe that God hears our prayers. And the little girl said, Daddy, do you believe that God hears everything we say? And the father says, absolutely. And he's feeling really proud of himself that he's been such an excellent role model. And she looked at him. She goes, then which thing that you just said does God believe? You get it? 
you and I, we have this conflict and we have these comments that we just throw out. And the bottom line is this father's complaint, 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 and then asking for the blessing of God on that meal did not make sense to a little mind. And quite frankly, it shouldn't make sense to us either. Amen? We should be people who go like, God, I am putting a watch over my mouth that I not sin against you. I'm going to be grateful for everything that you do, and I'm going to be an example of that gratitude by thanking you and praying for your blessing over it. Maybe another way to look at that, though, is that the food was so bad you need the blessing of God to make it edible. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But here's what I do know. God is calling his people up. Amen? He's calling us up. He wants us to be people who are authentic, filled with integrity, honest, truthful, makers of peace. We're doing the Sermon on the Mount, and um, I, I just get so blessed every time we dig in and unpack some of the Beatitudes. And um, there are several that have truly... Um, it's almost like God just opened the veil and said, Mary, look at this one differently now. Here's another layer of my love for you and for people. Here, look, peer in here, Mary. And he, and he helps me to gain a, a greater vision of his love every day and how it translates in the lives of people. We all meet people every day, and, and if we are actually... Uh, going to allow the word of God to become a part of our lives. In other words, we apply that, right? We apply it. We, we bring it into our lives and say, okay, God, I know that uh, blessed are those who are poor in spirit and know they need you. I know I need you, God. I am poor. I confess I am I am poor in spirit apart from you and your grace and the infilling of your spirit. Help me to hold on to that truth, God, and put that to work in my life. I can tell and I can be compassionate and empathetic to everybody else because I already know my own state apart from God is bankrupt. I could stop there, but I won't. But I'm not stopping there. The next one is, blessed are those who mourn. We're talking about a truth habit here. Do you mourn for the people who do not and have never met Jesus? And what do you do in a day that demonstrates that? Which one does God believe? Which one does God believe? See, we can do this, and this is a beautiful, beautiful expression of the love of God, but there's more. Somebody say, there's more. There's more. He's put gifts in each one of us, and we have different things that are, are going to pull up in a moment. And when you're doing your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not just your Sunday where do you find yourself in sharing with people who you know do not know Jesus? How do you handle that? Where is your heart in that? Does it make you sad? Do you cry out to God and go like, God, give me a burden for this person. I know they don't know Jesus. Give me a burden. I don't want to preach to them. I just want to love them into your arms. God, give me that burden. Put it on me. Help me to care that that person is walking through life and they're unhappy and they're miserable and and i can see that they need you i they're not if they don't if they know about you god they haven't tapped into the riches of your grace help me to care about those things god help me to care about those things it is a whole lot easier to put things in a backpack than to un just open up the heart of other people and deposit a word of knowledge or a word of grace into them. But both are important. Amen? I think about singing our song this morning, the God of the city. You're the God of the city. You're the king of these people. God, help us to have your heart. 
is my prayer all the time. What is your heart, O oh Lord? Help me practice that habit of truth. Help me embrace the good habit of caring about that, in other words. Help me get into that right mindset where I care so much that I can't handle it unless I do something to bless them and draw them to you. Amen? Every day. Somebody say every day. Every day day is the day of salvation because whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen? So as we live out a day, we need to be looking for ways to impart the love of God that will help people understand that salvation is here for them today. Today. When you go to the grocery store, you ever notice that God will kind of like take your eye to something? (laughs) When you're mowing the grass, Corby, do you ever notice God takes your eye to something to mow the neighbor's lawn? It is the way that it goes with the Spirit. The Spirit of God is sitting back going all the time. Come on, how will you demonstrate? It isn't just saying things to people. It's coming alongside them and loving them and, and, and showing them that the kingdom of God is real. It's real in your heart and it's real for them and it's available to them to live and move and have their being. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of living, and everything else in your life is going to be added to. He wants to bless his children. Blessed are those who, is our Sermon on the Mount study right now, blessed are those who. We need to be embracing a lifestyle of living the truth out in loving ways each day, every day. Okay, well, I don't go out of the house, Mary. I don't go out much. Of, I'm not going to be out there. Then pray for those who are going out. Amen? You have a job to do. Each of us have jobs to do. Sunday morning is not the only time to live in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We have this opportunity to live every day in his love, amen? And not just for ourselves, but for other people. Are you, have you been so bold to pray? Comes a challenge. Have you been so bold to pray that God would give you a burden for someone that you will see in a day? And to mark that in your understanding so that you can be a partaker of grace in connection to Jesus Christ in that moment. Have you been that bold? Said, Pastor Mary, I didn't know I could pray that way. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If we are going to grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, he lived life going about doing what? Good. He fellowshiped with people. He lived life with them. He loved them. He enjoyed all kinds of uh, fellowships and meals. and, and, And he looked all the time to pour into the lives of other people. Do you look for ways to pour into the lives of other people? But we get all hung up on ourselves. And we get into these little boxes and we have these bad habits that says, Oh, that's not me. I, I don't like talking out loud, and I don't like witnessing, and it's, I'm not an evangelist. I'm just not. I'm just not. You ought to know that. I'm something else, but I'm just not that. And I'm here to tell you that every Christian is an evangelist. Amen? Amen. Now, there are those who have a dominant gift of evangelism, but every Christian is an evangelist. And in some ways, every Christian needs to step up the game. Amen? Right now, we have kind of become, and I'm not saying this church, but as a whole, God's family has found themselves kind of apathetic about growth of his kingdom. We need that fire lit in us. Amen? We need that fire lit in us. And we need to say, Lord, 
give me a fire of truth and a love for people. Help me to touch them and make a difference in their, in their life and to bring them to you, God. And I don't just mean bring them to church, although I want you to bring them to church. I want them to meet Jesus. And they can do it in you. And it's a big responsibility. But it's living the truth habit. Amen? It's living the truth habit. God is all about correcting us when we go off in our own direction versus thinking about his kingdom, his righteousness, and what he wants from us in our lives. And he's so gracious and he's so generous to us. But even in the midst of that generosity, we can be terribly off track. Terribly off track. How do I know? I read the scriptures. Think about David. David got, he was anointed king. He was given the kingdoms of Judah. And, 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 and he was all about um, living this, you know, in the love and friendship of God. But he got lost with some bad habits. Amen? Some bad habit raised up. Some, somebody say sin. There you go. Sin raised up, and all of a sudden he finds himself that he has committed adultery with another man's wife, and then it doesn't stop there. He's got to cover it. How many of you know we just love to cover our sin? We don't want anybody else to know that, and we think that God doesn't, but let's just face it. If God knows everything we say and everything we do, he's already aware of it, and he's waiting for us. And all of a sudden, David manages to get so far as he has uh, Uriah the Hittite murdered during war, because he feels pretty clever about that. And then he takes his wife into his household and makes her his. He takes Uriah's wife. And then the prophet, somebody say truth is always going to come forward. We are to have a habit of truth, and when we veer from it, the truth habit finds us, amen? And so God brings the truth, and all of a sudden, the prophet Nathan comes along, and he says, you know, I'm going to tell you this story. I'm going to tell you a story, and let me just kind of like have you listen, David, because God's not pleased with you. Let's see if you can find yourself. Let's see if you will identify where you are so that you can embrace a greater measure of truth. He tells a, a story about two men in a city. And the two men in the city, one was rich and one was poor, and the rich man had all kinds of sheep and cattle, and the poor man had one lamb. And a guest comes to town. This is a shortened version. A guest comes to town, and all of a sudden, Dave, uh, you know, the rich man says, I need to slaughter a lamb. And instead of taking one of his own, and he has many, he goes to the poor man and he takes the one lamb that the poor man has. He slaughters it and he feeds it to the guest. And before Nathan can finish the story, David says, that man deserves to die. And Nathan goes, that man is you. Somebody say, ouch. When God puts his finger on our bad habits, our sin, and he goes, I want you to brace a good habit. I want you to come to the habit of truth. I want you to see truth in this area, and then I want you to start living in that place. I want it to be your go-to. In other words, I want your habit. I want it to be your go-to. When he does that, he brings the grace to do it. Amen? He brings the grace to do it. It's interesting, if we continue in the Psalter, I think it's 51, David talks about the fact that he needs God to clean him up. He realizes his sin. He goes, against you and against you only have I sinned, O God. I have sinned against you. I am so, so sorry. Clean me up, God. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Make me pure again. Make my heart pure again for you. Help me understand the truth. Help me walk in the truth, God. When you and I are willing to repent and actually come to that truth that God highlights, puts his finger on, he makes a way for that to be 
a cleansing time, a renewing time, and he does bring back the joy of his salvation. Amen? He's all about that. Jesus, he was, he had just fed the 5,000 on, on the hill, and then he travels to the other side, and people who had participated, you know, keep in mind, there were probably about 5,000 plus, 5,000 men plus women and children, and they all ate from the barley loaves and the fish. And they had been a part of a miracle, something truly amazing in the love of God. Jesus goes to the other side. They follow him. They're like, hey, what are you going to do here, Jesus? We didn't know. When did you get here? You know, small talk. Somebody say small talk. It's shallow living, all right? And Jesus does not go for it. So Jesus says, well, um, the truth is, you came looking for me not because you want what I really have, but because I fed you. I fed you with the loaves and fish, and you saw a miracle, and you, you saw that I could do something miraculous, and all that's true. But if you really were hungry, somebody say, if I were hungry, if you were really hungry, you would come to me, the living bread, and you would take of me and you would be satisfied all the time, not just from miracle to miracle to miracle, daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen? Jesus is saying, if you would just come to me, then you would never be hungry or thirsty again. If you would just let me fill you, you would have an entirely different habit. different habit. If you're here and you are, have had a burden put on your heart and you have somebody in your mind that you need help, God, he wants you to talk to them, okay? He wants you to share with them. I want you to raise your hand and we're going to pray, real pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the habit of truth and for those who raised their hand, God, I need you to anoint them to make a difference in the lives of those people that you've just bore witness in their hearts. Give them the strength, give them the power to share the good news. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Blessings for your week.